Uh, these machines, they are de Dion Bouton motor tricycles. They were built in Paris in the late 1890s. De Dion Bouton, French, Parisian. It's two people. One is the aristocrat, and that's uh, the Count de Dion. He's very enthusiastic. He wants to embrace the new internal combustion uh, era. Uh, he partners up with Georges Bouton, who is an old school engineer. And between the two of them, I can almost see them in their workshop, working together, the ideas, the concepts. A very successful partnership that lasted a quarter of a century, more than a quarter of a century. They are significant in uh, the development of uh, the motor vehicle. They are the uh, first high-speed internal combustion engines. Uh, in 1896, for instance, they are uh, re revolving at in excess of 2,000 uh, RPM, when the nearest equivalent was something like four or 500 RPM. So it's a huge step change. When the tricycle appeared on the streets of Paris, it was revolutionary. The, the Count was very much in favour of uh, giving as much publicity to the new product as possible. And they used um, some really interesting graphics and posters uh, to publicise it. And in fact, they were quite shocking in some of the images that, that they portrayed with semi-naked ladies on tricycles. So not only did the tricycle itself shock in a way because it, it was giving transport to a completely different sector of the market, but he's also aiming them at ladies and, dare I say, even ladies of the night. One way to identify a De Dion Bouton motor tricycle is these forks. By introducing the brace forks, which obviously gives a great deal of stability and strength to the front, you can easily identify a De Dion Bouton. The second way of identifying a De Dion Bouton motor tricycle is the De Dion tube. This tube here, on which the engine and other pieces of equipment are held, thereby separating it from the axle. The engine is air-cooled, you can see these fins here, that's to allow the dissipation of heat, so there is no water involved. Aluminium crankcase, early use of aluminium, very lightweight material. Ignition system, advance and retard, this is controlled by a lever up by the handlebars, so you can see that you can adjust it very easily. So this brass container here is actually a carburetor. It's called a surface carburetor because it uses the vapour uh, from a volatile liquid, usually hexane, um, and it takes that vapour and it sucks it in through the inlet here, uh, where the explosion happens at the top of the in engine. Here, there's the spark plug. And the whole thing is controlled by two little levers up here. This one is for the mixture, that's so the amount of air and fuel, and this one is the accelerator. And just by tiny adjustments, you can make the machine go better. In fact, once you've sorted them out, you tend to leave them where they are, and you go back to use, slowing the engine down by using the twist grip by cutting out the ignition. Well, here we have the uh, exhaust valve, which as you can see is mechanical, but above it is the inlet valve. And the inlet valve is atmospheric. And what that means is that it purely opens and closes on the air pressure in the cylinder. And when it goes up and down, it makes this tf, 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 tf sound. And that, funnily enough, is the name of the French car club. The old car club, it's called Tuf Tuf. So how do you start a motor tricycle? Well, the first thing you have to do is to make an ignition circuit. So you have an ignition pin and you insert it there. So that now makes a complete circuit. Next thing you have to do is decompress the engine and you do it quite simply by turning that lever. Next thing is to start it by pedaling it just as you would a bicycle. So we'll turn these half a dozen times and then immediately we have motion we will put the twist grip into go and then hopefully it will fire if it doesn't you've got to do it all over again Trike schools were built in the tens of thousands. I mean, it was difficult to imagine how popular they were, but they, they ceased very suddenly. It became quite clear that they were the product of a particular era, and as small four-wheel motor vehicles came 
powered often by the Dion Bouton engines, whilst this created a massive market for their product, it also gave them a lot of other competitors, which uh, many years later was possibly one of the causes of their downfall. Truss was a beautiful machine. There are so many interesting engineering concepts in them. It's just such a joy to ride. The ability to point the machine where you want it to go, to lean into corners, to experiment with carburation to get the best speed out of it. It's, uh, you become at one with the machine. It's, a, it's a very almost akin to horse riding. You, know, you become part of it and um, they are just a joy to ride.